museums and monuments are very significant in any developing nation like Nigeria, where historical records provide a link between the past, the future, and the present. Well, your guess is as good as mine. Yes, on issues today, we shall be looking at the preservation of artifacts. I am Ifoma Ojinta. Welcome to Issues on NTA Channel 5 Abuja, the Unity Station. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Now, man from prehistoric times has always been inquisitive. However, there should be no doubt about the enormous role which historic museums have played in the overall shaping of the society. When our guest joins us, we will learn more about the state of museums in Nigeria and efforts by government to preserve our artifacts to stay. Thank you very much for staying tuned and uh, now with me in the studio to discuss the preservation of our artifacts and um, monuments is the Director General, National Commissions for Museums and Monuments. He is Abba Issa Tijani. It's good to have you on issues today, sir. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. Now, let me start by asking you, how crucial is um, a monument and uh, museums for, for any nation? Well, definitely, you know, uh, monuments and uh, museums are very crucial part of any nation's uh, uh, emergence and development. Uh, in the case of, uh, you know, Nigeria, for example, you know, we have a very rich, uh, you know, cultural heritage and uh, history. We came a long way. And uh, in this uh, process of uh, nationhood, we have encountered a lot of, uh, you know, uh, identity history uh, that relates to our history. So basically, artifacts uh, are objects that uh, we, you know, uh, uh, know we have in any country that reflects its culture and tradition, and therefore we have uh, these objects uh, deposited in our museums. And that is where we go to understand about our history, about our culture and tradition. In the making of our history, we identify with some buildings, with some structures. And uh, over a period of time, we get, uh, you know, associated to this as part of our nation building. And it tells about our history and uh, what transpired during the struggle of nationhoods. Mm. So therefore, we identify such uh, and then uh, list them as monuments. Historically, how well you have we done, you know, in documenting these national artifacts as, as a people? Uh, we are renowned, you know, globally in terms of our history, in terms of our, the objects, artifacts we have. And uh, if you go to your uh, history class back in uh, secondary school times, mm. you will come to understand so much about, uh, you know, about our cultural uh, heritage. Uh, you know, uh, very much about the Benin, you know, uh, tradition, Ife, Ibo Uku, you know, the Sode bronzes, and so on. So that we have uh, a lot of, you know, documented, you know, history and uh, artifacts of our culture. And definitely we have gone far in doing that. But the next step is uh, we have large collections in our museums across the country. Okay. And uh, these artifacts in the museums are uh, not fully documented. Of course, we have, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, saying that we have so-so number of objects, yes, we have. But when you talk about documentation, you're talking about the history, the, the, the origin, the sources, and all the things that are attached to it. And this is what we are now trying to digitize okay. if uh, we are able to get uh, all the devices and the resources we require. Okay. We are going to do that. But in terms of history, we we are well known and uh, even globally okay yes. now let us into some of the problems you know militating against the growth of museums in nigeria i must proudly say that uh, we have over 50 museums uh, in nigeria i mean 50 national museums mm. in nigeria across the country almost in every state we have a museum so uh, 
the issue is really how you know exposed these museums are and how are they being looked after okay. and uh, whether they have the requisite uh, you know facilities and the objects on display that is the issue and one of the major problem we have is lack of awareness okay. many people don't know that there are museums even in their states and uh, so we have this challenge and uh, we do have our educational department that go to uh, schools and some part of the communities, but still there are a large number of our population that no, don't know about our museums. And one of the other major issues is the issue of funding. Mm. Uh, because these are national museums, therefore funding comes from government. And uh, as you can see, as a nation, we have been facing challenges over the years and uh, that has also affected our museum uh, you know institution and uh, we 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 have lots of collections that we could have actually have more museums if you look at uh, you know other countries where they have museums nigeria looking at the richness of the culture would have more museums actually we should have mm. been talking about two, the range of 200 museums in our country mm. You know, that, that's, I just recall when, when, when I was younger, I know that from school we, happen, we used to go for excursions, you know, at museums. But then I've, I've had children, but I've never heard any of them talking about going to the museum for excursions. Do, do we still have that? Students well, visiting the museums? Well, we do. Actually, the education department the reports I've been receiving, I just assumed, uh, you know, just two months ago, and I've been report, uh, getting reports every month about the... Uh, activities of museum uh, across the nation and I know that uh, there are school visits and also the museum staff also go to schools okay. to go and uh, you know educate our children about our you know collections our, about our heritage uh, but uh, this is an area that I'm looking at so that we can work with the schools uh, whatever we are doing should be in line with their curriculum so that uh, they can learn from that and when they sit uh, for their exams they will be able to recall faster when you see objects you understand the history behind it or surrounding it then you'll be able to recall and uh, recollect faster so we are trying to uh, start working with the schools now whatever we are going to uh, educate our children on it mm. should be in the line of uh, their curriculum Okay. Yeah. Now, still talking about um, our collection of our art artifacts and all that, mm -hmm. how far, you know, uh, with the said stolen artifacts, you know, of Nigeria, are, are we making any for effort to, to bring them back? Well, uh, this uh, there is a history behind, you know, all this. Of course, uh, you know, there is a United Nations uh, Convention which says that all cultural artifacts that have been, you know, taken or stolen from their you know country or origin should be returned and uh, we have challenges with our you know uh, countries that have engaged in these uh, illicit activities and uh, we are working with them and we have actually come a long way now we what we are the approach we are using is more of a friendly approach now okay. that is the kind of thing that i feel as a professional myself uh, will you yield more results uh, than confrontational one so we have started receiving quite a number of them just to tell you on the 2nd of november we got hold of a uh, uh, ife uh, you know terracotta okay. that was uh, returned to us and because of these uh, rest travel restrictions and this covid 19 okay. so we uh, asked the embassy nigerian embassy uh, to collect uh, on our behalf that was done in the ceremonial fashion okay. and we are receiving uh, waiting sorry to receive this uh, Beni, uh, Ife terracotta here in Abuja uh, which will be sent from the embassy and then we'll be able to show our country that we are really collecting and of course there are also anonymous you know return of objects okay. by individuals there are a lot of people today that they came to realize that they are great 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 grandparents uh, actually had collections of objects mm -hmm. across the world particularly in africa and then they have started contacting us 
to return these objects because they feel that you know they want these objects to go to go back to their uh, you know original owners. Mm -hmm. And we have been receiving quite a number of them. And uh, uh, just last month we received some two two Benin you know bronzes okay. uh, from from the UK from private collections. Mm -hmm. So we do receive them. Uh, where we have the problem or the challenges is with the museums. Okay. where these objects are you know uh, uh, in the possession of museums okay. and because they want to also uh, showcase okay. these collections and people to go and see the history mm -hmm. uh, surrounding these objects they don't want to part with them mm -hmm. but we have now built a, a benin dialogue as we call it okay. so that all artifacts all objects uh, benin objects that were taken during this uh, punitive expedition mm -hmm. uh, will be able to recover uh, most of them because many museums are willing to give back okay. and uh, we want to work in partnership so that uh, you know they'll be able to help us in training you know our staff and so on so that they will be able to you know do the needful we hear something about the echo museum mm -hmm. can you tell us about it and the advantages of the echo museum well echo museum actually was coined in the, in france by uh, some uh, French museologists. Okay. And the idea behind Echo Museum is, uh, is not just, you know, museums are structures, you know, buildings where they house objects. But in the case of Echo Museum, we are looking at community participation. So that you designate a community that the structures, all the, the, the environment, the natural environment, the landscape, the objects in situ, that means the objects in their places where they are being used, for example, cooking pots, ritual you know, places, and so on, mm. all these will form part of the museum. Okay. So it's no longer, it's not a, like a, a building, a structure mm. where you go into and look at artifacts. Mm. So this one, the whole community, the whole environment, and the people in the environment, Okay. are part of the Eco Museum and therefore they, the community participate as also they are part of that Eco Museum mm. and owners of that you know, Eco Museum as well and therefore in doing that it brings, it promotes economic development okay. to the community. So the community will gain, you know, people coming in, you know, will uh, of course uh, uh, do a lot of things, buy things and uh, you know, pay to go in there and so on. So the community and the local authority, as well as the, the national government, will participate and uh, will uh, form uh, part of the Eco Museum. That okay. is the concept. Okay, yeah. are we likely to have that in Nigeria any time? That is one of the things I have uh, actually on my table, on my desk, that I want to look at. We have so many communities that can be designated as eco museum we have even even not far from the fct we have some communities that we have identified as uh, archaeological sites and so on mm -hmm. so you can form that as a uh, archaeological site as part of that eco museum within the community mm -hmm. so yeah uh, but we can make it in a way that we can generate revenue, revenue exactly. definitely yes. all right okay <laughs> let's take a break now sir thank you well, you are watching Issues on NTH and 5 Abuja. The discussion Absolutely. continues Abuja. shortly. Please stay with us. You're welcome back. And today on Issues, if you just joined us, we are looking at the preservation of our artifacts and museums and, of course, the state of museums in Nigeria. And still with me in the studio is the Director General, National Commission for Museums and Monuments, Abba Isa Tijani. Now, sir, can you tell us, you know, what, what is the economic value of museums to the country? Well, uh, this is one of the areas that uh, has not been given the attention it desires. Because uh, even though we say that museum is not is a non-profit uh, making institution at the service of the community, because basically what we do is to educate the community, our people, to entertain them and to tell them about our history and culture. Mm. But uh, the uh, museum hold uh, actually priceless objects, 
objects of uh, our uh, history mm. and culture and tradition. And uh, museums can drive a lot of economic benefits because uh, we can partner with the private sector in promoting the institution of museum in a way that we can generate revenue because we can organize programs you know about educating the community and attracting tourism and so on with uh, the private sector and uh, that can be done in a way that it can, it can generate revenue to our you know country mm -hmm. and also uh, anywhere we go we attract uh, you know where we have museums we attract uh, tourists mm -hmm. so anywhere that tourists go of course uh, it uh, 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 contributes towards the economic development of the region mm -hmm. and uh, museums are institutions where a lot of people abroad have respect for that they want to come and see mm. the history behind a nation and particularly Nigeria's uh, you know encounter with the international community is something that people abroad want to come and see for themselves what are this uh, you know what is this richness of their culture that makes them become popular and renowned and a lot of travelers that came to the country before mm. you remember you know uh, pre-colonial period we have so many travelers uh, Naktigal, Henry Bath, Mongo Park, and mm. so many people came and uh, they said they discovered a lot of things, but they are already there. Mm. And don't forget about our, you know, the old empires, you know, the, the Oyo Empire, mm. the Kanun Borno, and so many of them. And uh, the, you know, the trade that took place during the Trans Saharan, you know, uh, I mean, on the Trans Saharan route, mm. that also actually contributed to the history of our community. So if tourists will be coming to visit our museums, we will definitely uh, uh, get a lot of uh, economic benefits from it. The advantage we have is that uh, these objects that are made by our you know, uh, people here, mm -hmm. if you look at them at that time, look at the technology. Do we have that technology that time? Look at the Benin you know, artifacts. Mm. Look at the Ife, you know, even Ibo Oku mm. and the Nok culture. You know, you look at them, how they are produced with precision, with meanings, with all the, you know, different markings that tells about the community, about the history, about the heritage of that community. You will see that the white man will just be looking at it. How did they produce this thing at that time? You know, yeah. so definitely, you know, without this technological advancement, yet we produce such kind of art, artworks. Mm. It's something to be proud of. Mm. Yeah. We know that, you know, prehistorically, man has been quite so very inquisitive. Mm. Are you worried, you know, that the internet, you know, has overtaken archaeological research? You know, and that with just a click of a button, one can assess, you know, historical records without moving, you know, a muscle? Well, technology today cannot do anything without the history, without what has transpired and the various artifacts and uh, the paraparandia behind it. So you cannot, uh, you know, come up with a, a technology and say that, you know, that the technology produce archaeological artifacts. You have to have the artifacts. So we have to have the objects and therefore we now, the way we use these our archaeological objects to educate people, to tell history, to tell about our stories, can be in a different, you know, uh, different uh, 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 approach mm. or approaches. Because uh, whether you use technology or whether you use the book, you know, or whether you use the ordinary classroom teaching, mm. is that uh, you need the objects. Okay. And therefore, you know, we know that uh, when it comes to excavation, you can say that with this modern technology, it makes it easier for objects to be detected. You know, that is understandable, just like, uh, you know, drilling of uh, uh, petroleum products. Okay. But at the end of the day, you have to have these archaeological objects to write the history. Okay. Yes. Let's come down to the nation's capital, the state of government, Abuja. We know that the FCT is symbolic to national unity. Mm -hmm. What monuments 
do we have here that the authorities should guard generously? I want to tell you that it will surprise you to say that we don't have a national museum in Abuja. Any country you go in the world, you see that they have a national museum at the capital. But in Nigeria, we have been concentrating our museums around where our findings have been. Mm. And uh, so we have, while doing that, we now have almost a museum in every state of the country. But in, in Abuja, we don't have a national museum. And this is the time now really to have a national museum, given that we are receiving a lot of objects from outside the country that have been, you know, uh, taken away. So objects are being repatriated and we are receiving them. So we want to have a national museum in Abuja that we can showcase these collections that we have not been able to see. It's only the privileged few that travel abroad and, and visit museums that will, uh, probably have seen these objects. Mm. But I know that uh, the, the, the famous Zuma rock exactly. is in our tentative mm -hmm. list. So we are waiting for that to be declared a national monument. Okay, now so we've said quite a lot of the program today. Yeah, what are your you. final thoughts? What do you want Nigerians to know, you know, concerning our discussions today that we've not mentioned? Well, uh, one of the things I want to uh, really say now with, uh, you know, taking over as the Director General of the National Commission for Museums and Monuments, one important thing that I want to put in place is this uh, public-private partnership. You know, uh, with all uh, uh, what we have been hearing is lack of funding, lack of funding. That's why our museums are still not at the state we want them to be. Mm -hmm. So if we can partner with the private sector, I think uh, we'll be able to you know, improve on our museums and then we'll be able to expand our activities so that we can reach every sector of the community and understand uh, what museum is and about the history and culture. And one of these uh, private partnership that I want to go into is with the banks as well. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I was in Lagos uh, two weeks ago where we uh, opened an exhibition at Terra Culture. The minister, I accompanied the minister, uh, Minister uh, Lajilai Mohamed. Banks actually have a lot of customers, a lot of people visiting, you know, banks. If you go to the banking hall, you see the long queues mm. of customers, you know, waiting to yeah. uh, carry out their yeah. transactions. And then you go to the, you know, ATMs, you see a lot of queues. So why can't we partner with the banks so that we can create a mini gallery, a mini museum within the yeah, bank, right. so that people that are not able to go to the museums can also, we can go to them, you know, to the banks, and they are there wait, while waiting to do, carry out their transactions. They will see and appreciate our cultural heritage. Okay. So this way, you know, the banks also can help us develop our museums, mm -hmm. you know, and then we can get this, uh, you know, recognition as well so that we can bring them to a standard, uh, international standard as well. Okay, you're still talking yeah. about, you know, partnering with other agencies. Yeah. I think I read somewhere about a collaboration between you, your commission and the military. Is there yes. Tell us about that. Yes, uh, you know that uh, we have the War Museum in Umahia. Okay. So that is uh, a collaboration between us and the Army. And that museum is uh, about uh, the, especially uh, the Biafra War, this, uh, the civil war that took place, and uh, so many, uh, you know, uh, history of, you know, uh, civil unrest where the military intervened. So we have, you know, collections that tells us about this history, and that we are partnering with the army. Okay. And actually, it's army is funding that museum, okay. and we are the professional that are taking, looking after the museum. Okay. So that's another partnership. Yeah, that, that would be nice. So we hope that we will have. Uh, you know, partnership uh, with other, you know, institutions mm. where we can have museum uh, telling their history and so on. Then we look after the museums. All right. Thank you so very much. And that will be all for this okay. discussion. It's been indeed, you know, a pleasure having you here on issues. And I've been speaking with the Director General, National Commissions for Museums and Monuments, Abba Issa Tijani. Thank you so very much, sir. Thank you very much and thank you for having me.
All right, now you will agree with me that the time on issues today has been quite revealing and educating, as explained by our guests. Our museums are part of our history, so let us patriotically guide them. Thanks for sharing your time with us. See you next week. <laughs>